Well, one of our owners wanted to update his bike this year, and uh, we've done maybe two or three designs for him in the past. When we found out we were going to get the owner's bike, it was really exciting, but it was also a lot of concern, too, because we're into in production, and all of a sudden, here comes a one-off custom. So uh, once uh, Dave approached me, and uh, we kind of went through and gave him three, four designs, but basically, we wanted to give him a fresh new look. And he was looking for something that was lean and clean, give it a lot of length to it, you know. I was pretty excited when, when I heard that Dave wanted us to build him a new tank and he had somewhat of a design that he wanted us to carry on. It's all completely handmade and it's uh, originally it started out as uh, uh, a full pump tank and we, we eliminated the pump and that's how we were able to, to lower the dash a little bit farther. And then uh, like I say he also wanted uh, a flat style dash, new style dash so we actually had to hand make a new dash to fit this new tank. You know, he was looking for candy red, which is one of his favorite colors, of course. Um, and then uh, the dark bottom, kind of like a two-tone. But he just didn't want a, uh, a sliver graphic or a thin graphic in between. He wanted something with a little more style and a little more pizzazz to it. After talking with the art director, we decide uh, what kind of stripes we want. Uh, the thickness of the stripes, the colors of the stripes. Uh, on Dave's bike, we had three different stripes, all tied together very, very tight. In fact, the stripes were 16th of an inch, and that was the, the whole bike throughout. And it's kind of rare, usually they're not that thin, but on this one, that's what it called for, and it came out really nice. Dave's bike was across the street getting painted, so David talked about building the motor. You know, I was really excited about it because I kind of had a feeling that he was just going to let me do whatever I wanted, so I told him what kind of bike I wanted to build him, and he said, going to be rideable and I said yeah getting after it it'll be rideable it'll be a good time and he said well do it so the first thing we did was um, sent the heads out to get poured and polished and uh, bigger valves and everything like that got the cylinders bored over 10 over then I sent everything down to Nevada to get diamond cut Dave wanted some bling and I don't think he realized how blingy it was until he got back but I think he likes it now so I wanted a bike that sounded kind of meaner than it was, I guess, because I wanted to stay reliable, because the last thing I need is Dave calling me from the side of the road. So I went with a little lower if cam. I still used, you know, a pretty good amount of duration to give it that, that thump that, that everybody, you know, hears from a Harley. And then uh, use Vance and Hines True Dual head pipes with um, some CFR mufflers he found on the internet, which I was skeptical about, but he, uh, they sound awesome. They made good power. Ended up changing out the intake valves, 212 intakes, Beehive spring so we could run, um, just a lot easier on a whole drivetrain. Um, when you run a lower lift like that, you don't need to run dual springs because it just kind of beats everything up, you know. So it's a it's a light running motor. I mean, the springs are light, the beehives they're dual rate. I didn't want to port and polish the throttle body because, and I didn't want to run a bigger throttle body because it would have already taken some of the runnability out of the bottom end that's it's got now. But that happens when you use big valves, big ports. Things suffer a little bit in the bottom, so. I, I kept that stock size so we could still get some runnability out of it, but um, at the end of the day it came out with a 124 foot-pounds of torque and 114 horse. So it's a runner and it comes on about three grand and it, it pulls. We ordered a 23-inch wheel and a fender to fit that wheel and Dave Call kind of wanted something that was similar to fenders we'd built in the past. so. He came in, we drew it out on the fender, on the bike, and we just cut it out a little bit at a time to get it just perfect for him. It brings out the front of the wheel really well, and then the back, it just creates a line flowing throughout the entire bike. We had some vents cut out in the side covers and put in some stainless steel mesh grill, and then I wrapped a red LED around it and then we attached it to the accessory plug-in on the bike. So don't even know it's there. You just flip a switch and you have red lights shining out of the side. You know, one whole side of that bike is laid out by the art director. From then it goes on to the next step, uh, whether it's second, third colors, airbrushing, shadowing, or drop shadows, whatever you need. It, the art director is completely involved most of the time with all one-off custom stuff. There's added steps of clear, and then the polishing is done in a different manner to where it's completely flat, sanded, re-cleared, and then uh, polished. You'll QC the entire bike, all the pieces, and then once that's done, it'll go into a clear lockdown. It's a polyurethane clear, uh, it's a high solids clear, it's uh, built for uh, 
having to stand it and uh, get a lot of the edge knocked off of it. And we polished the entire bike and then it has that show bike finish.